What is up, everybody? Welcome back to another Pitching Ninja's Filthiest Pitches of the Day. Remember, before we get to those pitches, hit that subscribe button, join Ninja Nation, and now without further ado, here are my filthiest pitches of the day. I'm going to start with Braxton Garrett, who had seven strikeouts in six innings thanks to these wicked sliders. In his last two starts, he's had 11 strikeouts and seven strikeouts. Looks to be putting it together. Tyler Anderson had these nasty change-ups and cutters and had six strikeouts and six innings, giving up no earned runs. His ERA on the season, 279. Jose Urquidy had three strikeouts and six innings, giving up only one run. Cole Irvin had eight strikeouts and seven innings thanks to his fastball. Irvin took advantage of a pretty big zone, which is what a pitcher's supposed to do, and lowered his ERA to 3.08. Graham Ashcraft was filthy. He had eight strikeouts in four and two-thirds innings. He did give up four runs, but those four runs weren't an indication of how nasty he was. His cutter was up to 101 miles an hour. 101 mile an hour cutter from a starting pitcher. That is freaking nuts. He also had a filthy slider. And here's an overlay of his cutter and slider. You can see how that combo can be really tough for a hitter. In the first two innings, he had 43 pitches over 98 miles an hour. According to Codify Baseball, in the StatCast era, the most before that was 30. Of course, that means he threw a lot of pitches in the first two innings, but he was getting squeezed a bit. Despite Ashcraft's overpowering stuff, this season he really hasn't caged a lot of hitters, but that might be changing. With that ridiculous stuff, I expect him to figure it out. Zach Gallon had seven Ks and seven scoreless innings, giving up only two hits. Nathan Ivaldi had these dirty back-to-back curveballs. I mean, look at that bat go flying. Of course, that was the only Red Sox pitching highlight of the night as they proceeded to give up 28 runs. Go! The pitching the rest of the night looked like a scene out of baseball bugs. And I don't mean that in a good way. On the other side, Kevin Gosman was filthy. He had 10 strikeouts in five innings thanks to these wicked splitters. And thankfully, he stayed in the game despite the Blue Jays being up big because he won Will Leahy, yes, the famed Pitching Ninja producer, a ton of money on FanDuel Sportsbook because Leahy had him for 7, 8, 9, and 10 Ks. Well done, Long Dong Leahy. Corbin Burns was filthy as always with these curveballs, cutters, changeups, and his sliders. He had five strikeouts in five innings. Max Scherzer had 8 Ks in 6 innings thanks to his usual filth. And I love this overlay of 2 strikeouts to left-handed hitters. You can see the perils of guessing with Max. First one is a cutter inside, and then just when you expect a cutter, you get a fastball. And you take it for a strike. That pitch sequencing is one of many reasons Scherzer has been so great. But he was outdueled by Yu Darvish, who had nine strikeouts in seven innings, giving up only one run. Darvish had his splitter, his slider, and his fastball working, and lowered his ERA this year to 3.28. Charlie Morton had seven strikeouts in six innings, giving up only two hits, thanks, of course, to his buzzsaw curveball. This one was 3,167 RPMs. But my filthiest starter of the night was Shohei Otani. Otani had 11 strikeouts in six innings with an amazing display of an overpowering fastball, wicked splitters, and nasty sliders. I mean, check out these breaking balls. They're absolutely soul-stealing. Look at him absolutely buckle Acuna with this one. Otani is so talented he can throw 101 miles an hour and still have the presence of mind to be concerned for a fan on a foul ball. For having such mean stuff, he sure is a nice guy. Otani only gave up one hit through the first six innings. Unfortunately, in the seventh, that's when the wheels came off a little bit. All right, that's an understatement. A lot of bit. He gave up six runs. Basically, it was all downhill after this walk to Dansby Swanson. But you see, Otani may have missed the strike zone, but he did stick the landing. As Pitching Ninja, I refuse to let one bad inning cancel out the absolute filth fest that Otani put on last night. In minor league action, two Ninja regulars, Dustin May and Lance McCullers, made their rehab appearances, and both were disgusting. McCullers had this vicious back foot breaking ball, and Dustin May's slider averaged 3,253 RPMs on the night. 
Yes, Ninja Nation, get prepared for some more ridiculous filth. I can't wait to have both May and McCullers back in the show. Now on to my filthiest relievers. Dylan Lee had three strikeouts in one inning of work. Dylan Tate had this wicked 97-mile-an-hour sinker. Clay Holmes had this incredible 98-mile-an-hour sinker and 89-mile-an-hour slider that I overlaid. The very definition of making your balls look like strikes and strikes look like balls. Devin Williams absolutely annihilated the side with cutters, his airbender, and his fastball. And here's a three-pitch overlay of those three pitches. That is nasty. As if Devin wasn't nasty enough, adding a cutter gives hitters one more thing to think of. And opponents are already only hitting 085 against his fastball because they have to worry about the airbender. Devin has a 15.2K per nine this year, and that may be going higher. But my filthiest reliever of the night was Felix Bautista. He was absolutely dominant. Hitting 101 miles an hour with his fastball and then throwing this ungodly 91 mile an hour splitter. This is about as good a splitter as you will ever see. Look at this alien thing. And here's an overlay of that splitter with his 99 mile an hour elevated fastball. Good freaking luck. Look at that splitter start out in the same plane as that fastball and then dive to the dirt. Absolutely disgusting stuff. And now, my Pitching Ninja moment of zen. When your team is up 28 to 5, you have time to explore making new cocktails in the dugout. What is up, Ninja Nation? My picks of the day today are for Tristan McKenzie to have 9 strikeouts or more, and for Alec Manoa to have 8 Ks or more. Tristan McKenzie's been really good recently. He's coming off a 12 strikeout outing, and Alec is coming off his dominant performance in the All-Star game. So, I think both of those are doable. What would your picks of the day be? 